Greetings and salutations, everyone. No doubt you've encountered the new Google Plus thing we're all supposed to do here now, and I'm here to give a bit of help and some of my thoughts on the issue. Without your YouTube being tied to a Google Plus account, you can't comment anymore. Not even on your own videos, which is frustrating, and you won't be notified of new comments appearing. Pain in the butt, but this is sort of important, so registering for one is actually something you'll want to consider, considering how crippled you'd be without one. First of all, I'd like to tell everyone that at the very least they made it pretty easy to sign up. They didn't really make it clear what does what, but it's not hard. As soon as you give in and actually decide to press the button that shows up every time you try to do anything at all, say, try to comment on a video, if I go, say, here, and try to comment, all you have to do is click this, and it'll come up and say, hey, you want to do a thing. Or usually there's something at the top, on the main page, whatever. But when you do, a prompt will come up asking you to do, in general, one of two things. You may get a different prompt, but I think the vast majority of people are, will be getting one specific prompt. And I'd really like to actually show you this prompt, but I've actually connected all my accounts, and I didn't think far enough ahead to think that I was going to be, I would want to save one for doing a video like this. But really, you're just going to be given two options to choose from, for the most part. You can either use the same name everywhere, and it'll just grab your YouTube name, or you can use two different names, one on Google+, and one on YouTube. It'll keep your YouTube name on YouTube, and it'll grab your, I think, your real name from your Google account that you use to sign into YouTube, your Gmail and the like, as your Google Plus account. Now this is actually more important than one would imagine. You see, it's not just a name change that's happening here. Clicking the first to have both of them with the same name will set up a Google Plus account tied to your YouTube. This is by far what most people will want to do. It's a personal account that's made. The second option, to use two different names, actually creates a Google Plus page, not an account. It still lets you do everything on YouTube, you could with a Google Plus account, but this new page isn't really a personal thing, it's more like I maybe make one as a fan club, or if my YouTube account was run by multiple people and we wanted one overarching page representing all of us in everything you do. If you, like me, sort of just want to get this over with and promptly forget the Google Plus thing even exists, I just go with the first one, make an account with the same name across the board, and move on. After you do that, it will take you to Google Plus, to set up your account. Now the first thing it'll do is ask you for a bunch of information to fill out your profile. And you can see that information uh, right here, but we'll be getting to this in a moment. I left all mine blank. After you fill in that information, it'll look around for people you may know and suggest you add them as friends. I didn't. It said I'd be lonely. I hit advance anyway. And that's really it. We're done setting up Google+. It's just that simple. They ask you just a couple questions, you can just hit I don't care, continue, and you're done. There is one last thing that you'll want to do before we really go anywhere, though, and that's going... and that's clicking on Home up here and going down to Settings. Because you'll want to skim down to the bottom here where it actually lists your what you will be emailed about. You'll want to set that to what you want it to be, but personally, I just unchecked everything because I don't want Google emailing me. But that's really it. We're kind of done at this point. Now, for those who don't know, Google Plus is essentially a little Facebook-like thing that Google's been rolling out. You can type here to post, you can post photos, links, videos, events, standard things. And what you see here is actually my own 
home, so to say. You can also go check your profile, which is what other people will see. Why this giant picture is up top is beyond me. But from here, you could like look at the about page, posts, photos. I'm actually going to view this as public so you all can see what I would have, which is almost nothing. But that's it. That's sort of Google+. Plus. Now, real quick, I'm going to hop back over and show you I accidentally created one of these a while back but this is the page that's created as opposed to the personal Google Plus account and you can see there's not really much here it's kind of the same as before it just doesn't look like there's as much here and it's not as directly tied with my YouTube the one suspicious thing here though is that there's no settings button so really, though, that's about it. That's pretty much all of Google+. If it looks like your kind of thing, more power to you. I'm not touching it with a 10-foot pole. Heading back to YouTube now, and we'll see what's all, what all's changed over here that we actually care about. I'm just going to leave my Google Plus account there. It exists, and you can, in general, get away with never going back. Well, a couple things have changed over here on YouTube as well. Some have changed for the better, some not so much. Some of the biggest changes for you, the viewers, are in the comments. Just down here in the comments, for one, I don't think there's a character limit on comments anymore. I may be mistaken in this, but I don't think there is. That's nice for you guys. You can also put in hashtags for whatever reason, for whatever reason. Oh man, hashtag hashtags. You can also bold and italic and underscore and strike through and I honestly don't remember how, but when you first sign up for Google Plus, there's all kinds of help pages and everything. And that's another neat thing that's done and it will actually make the comment section a little more lively in that regard. Another neat thing that's done is that you can edit posts. Well, I can't edit old posts. But like this one here, which was made very recently, you can just click this little thing here and there's an edit button. You can actually edit your YouTube posts, man. Holy crap. You can also post links in comments now, which is another thing. Now one of the other big thing that's big things that's changed is by default it will say top comments here. Top comments essentially sorts the comments by what it thinks is most important to you. In my case this is going to be stuff like my own comments, which is why some of my own comments are up here. Comments that have gotten the most thumbs up are going to be higher ranked and put in the top comments. It will also look out and find people who are more well known in the community. More subscribers, more well known on Google Plus and the like, and it'll bump their responses up top. Because they figure we are actually interested in seeing what popular people want to know, not what everybody wants to know. Now as we saw previously, there's some things you cannot do which is reply to old comments. We saw the comment that I posted previously that I couldn't edit. Older comments you also can't reply to for whatever reason. And then finally, there's a little button here that says also share on Google+. So once you make your comment, if this is ticked, it'll make a post on Google+, that you made that comment. In general, I think this is all stuff that will make comments a little more interesting for the viewer, but it's also things that can be very, very easily abused. If the rating on a comment will get it put into top comments and get everybody to see it, that makes spam much easier to make. 
You can get together 50-odd dummy accounts, thumb up your own post advertising some weight loss site, and suddenly it's a top comment, and it's right there. Since there's no character limit on comments anymore, that's also going to be a e very easy way to spam. And I mentioned before that one of the deciding factors in what makes a top comment is how well known you are on Google+, which essentially means all the people who have been on Google+, and like Google+, will automatically have top comments. And personally, a lot of that's a lot of BS, and a lot of that's going to be going to make managing the comments and keeping them intelligent a lot harder. Now, that was a bunch of information from the viewer's standpoint. From the producer's standpoint, like my own, there's a couple things that have changed that are sort of helpful, and also some not so much. For one, instead of top comments, because some of these comments are in a very weird order, and that makes it really hard for me to read the comments. I'll check the comments on a video, and I'll know which ones I've seen. If I check back at a later date, I'll skim down until the one that I remember seeing. But if things are ordered by top comments, I don't know what I haven't seen. Because to me, all comments are equal. I need to see all of them. Now, thankfully, we can just toggle this over to newest first, but you have to do that every single time you look at the comments, which is going to get a little irritating a little fast. Now, the other thing of note is notifications. You see, you don't get notified via your inbox anymore. You get notified through Google Plus notifications, which is what this little bell up here with the four next to it has been all this time. This is where I see about new comments on my videos, when people like videos and the like. This is where it all ends up. And this is sort of nice, because it is just a really quick thing to see, hey, I've got these. I can click on that, I can read it, and I can scroll up through all of the new ones. And then I can hit back to look back at everything here. Overall, that actually works reasonably well. However, I, you're given an option on Google Plus to choose whose notifications you see. Say if there's certain people, that, certain groups, certain circles that you don't care about, or you only want to be notified of things that happen from your friends, you can do that. I need to see all of them, though. I don't, have, I don't care who's posting a comment. I want to be able to choose what I get notified by. Personally, I don't care when someone adds me to a circle. I just don't care. I want to be notified about comments. Also of note is I'm actually reading through this and checking all my comments, and I'm still reading through the comments on this random video. That is a very nice thing, because I can look at my comments and I can see new comments from anywhere without having to leave. That is nice. Now, I did mention before that our inbox is essentially gone, and yes it is, you can still get to it in a roundabout way. I've found I have to go to Video Manager, and then go down to Inbox. Now, these are all old comments, for one. These are the comments that were made before everyone got booted up to Google+. So these aren't going to be updating anymore anyway. However, this is also where my personal messages are. And you can still send and receive personal messages, and there's no easy way to tell when you've got one without going this roundabout way to get here to check. This actually frightens me a little bit, because I get the feeling Google has just kind of forgotten that personal messages exist. If it were set so personal messages 
I got notified by up here as well, that I would like. And I could, like, say, click on that and see the whole thing and maybe set this up so it was going through Google Plus or whatever. I don't know. I don't care. But this does scare me a little bit, and I really don't like it. However, a couple other things have changed, such as you can now go down here to switch accounts really easily, and I can just hop over to, say, Dr. Godpants, and I'm still on the same comments page, even. I mean, I'm on Dr. Godpants' comments page, but it still comments. Now, for those of you who don't know, Dr. Godpants is my secondary account. I used to post dumb things to it that I didn't think belonged on the main channel, but I honestly haven't put a video up over here in a very long time, so I wouldn't really worry about it. But, it's just that easy to hop back over, and I'm right back on Naka. Now, as I said before, from my perspective, comment management actually gets a little bit tricky, because now I have... I'm having a harder time dealing with comments, dealing with who's posting what, who's posting what inflammatory thing, and what can be seen and can't be seen. But that's really about it. As far as I've seen, that's what's changed and that's what's important. For the most part, it's changes sort of for the better. The biggest thing I'm scared of is that we're missing an inbox. Now, as to my thoughts on the whole matter, YouTube makes some big changes every six months or so, and we're always annoyed by them. However, usually it's just a matter of what we're used to getting changed, and we're upset because things are different, and once we all get used to it, we'll stop caring and realize it's really not that bad. Next big change rolls around, and we'll be hating on it because we're used to this now. Some people will argue that point for this as well, and I'm usually one of the first to try to calm everybody down, but this is a lot bigger than that. It's like they decided the only way to keep using YouTube was to link to a Facebook account and have everything you do tied to that Facebook account now. I honestly don't care. I just want to use YouTube. I think there was a much better way for Google to go about doing this. Instead of pushing it in our faces, they could have just quietly given everybody a Google Plus account tied to their Google or their Gmail, their Google account, which we have to use to log into YouTube anyway, and just give us a nice little, hey, your account's got a Google Plus account now. Check it out. And then for those who want it, give us an option to tie our account to Google+, Plus so our stuff gets posted there. The same way we can tie our YouTube account to, say, Twitter. If we want it, it's there. If not, we can ignore that all Gmail accounts now have a Google+, Plus account, and really everybody's happy. All the stuff done to YouTube directly could have pretty easily be done without having to have a Google+, Plus account tied to it. This does kind of defeat the purpose of what they did, though, and as such, they wouldn't do it. Go you see, Google Plus wasn't too popular. It's been around for a while now. Not too many people liked it or wanted anything to do with it. They didn't want to get rid of it or let it fail, so they had to make it popular by force. Really crappy marketing and abuse of power there. That said, at the end of the day, this isn't too bad. A lot of what I don't like, I don't like on principle, not because I'm actually inconvenienced or anything. I can all but ignore Google+, and everything here goes on almost as normal. If there were any real changes I'd like to make, it's to give us the option to save that I want the post to Google+, unchecked, as well as save that I want comments listed newest first. Neither of these would happen, since they smack in the face of them forcing Google Plus on us, but it'd be nice. The only other thing I'd really like is to have a proper inbox. Just as simple as filling the old inbox with Google Plus notifications. Let us sort them by type there, so I can look at comments, people adding me to circles, PMs, all in different locations and tabs or whatever, and... You can put a link to that 
right here on the main page. Either drop this down, you could put it up here somewhere, or click on this, you could put it in here somewhere at the top or bottom of this page. So that's it. The changes made to YouTube. I know it's a pain, but it's not the end of the world. I'll still be here, and I'll still be uploading, and I hope to see all of you around.